full stop, and then in one three left if that's available. Pablo Del Tango, India Bank, Palm Springs Tower, Squawk 6250. 6250. Pablo Del Ten uh, Tango, India Bank, Palm Springs Altimeter is 2985, radar contact, about uh, one zero miles west of the Palm Springs VOR. Presently landing, uh, runway 31, you're requesting straight in for 13. Uh, that's available. Ever uh, correction, pop up Del Tango, India Bank, make straight in runway 13 left and clear to land. Wind is 0905. Clear to land runway 3 left, pop up Del Tango, India Bank, thanks. Palm Spring Excursions, plus 4658 is type P6 final slam call, request clearance to Vegas as filed. Plus 4658, Palm Springs clearance. Good afternoon, unable to give you as filed, I'll be full route stepping. Plus 4658 is cleared to the Las Vegas airport. VFI Cathedral 1 departure procedure to Palm Springs, Victor 370, to 29 Palms, Victor 538, Cresso, join the Cresso 3 arrival. Maintain 7000, check by level 2, 405 minutes after departure, departure frequency 126.7, squawk 6316. Cathedral 1, Palm Springs, Victor 37029, Palms, Victor 538, Presso, Presso 3, uh, initially climb 7,000, expect to cruise the rest of the files, March 1, 6, 7, Spoke 6, 7, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 5, Pause 4, 6, 5, 8, 3, back is correct. Tango, you might contact the ground via echo and this frequency. Texting to the ground via echo, remaining on this frequency, public does any mic. Like. Ontario Tower says the 237 Charlie Alpha are approximately 3 uh, 4 miles to the west inbound to land. Number 237 Charlie Alpha, Roger, inner left traffic, left downwind runway 26 left in Port Base. Enter uh, left downwind 26 left in Macquarie Base, uh, 237 Charlie Alpha. Charlie Tower, United 242, on the visual for 20 right, then we're turning for a right bridge starting. United 242 Charlie Tower, runway 20 right, clear to land, wind 1703. Clear to land. Near 520 NT Kilo Palomar Tower, runway 24, clear to land, and the 210 at 1. Clear to land, Number 237 Charlie Alpha, runway 26 left, clear to land. 26 left, clear to land, 7 Charlie Alpha. Palm Springs Ramp Plus 4658, East Strand, East Weather, going for taxi. Plus 4658, Palm Springs Ground, runway 31 right, taxi via Echo and Bravo. Ground right via Echo Bravo 4658. Riverside Tower, good morning, November 2903 Alpha, with you on the island. Number 2903 Alpha, Riverside Tower, good afternoon. Runway 9 are clear, low approach, report miss. November 2903 Alpha, the low approach, runway 9, next day 450. Palm Springs Tower, plus 465, it's ready to go to the right side, bro. Okay, what's the new radio on radio check? Plus 465. Palm Springs Tower, runway 31 right, clear for takeoff. Sheriff takeoff, turn on right, bus 465. Here's our Yankee Kilo, Roger Taxi into the ramp via Alpha. Via yeah, Alpha, that's good. Lotus 4658, contact, so how departure? Contact departure 465. Says the 7 Charlie Alpha is clear, the active taxi to the GA parking lot. We're set to travel out there, and on this frequency taxi into the south ramp via Sierra. Saffron Fire Sierra with you, 7 Charlie Alpha, thanks. Number 03 Alpha, going around. Number 03 Alpha, confirm going around or going missed? Number 03 Alpha, going missed. Number 03 Alpha, Roger, execute the published missed approach procedure. Flying the published missed approach procedure. Number 09 Alpha, missed. Hyper 2903 Alpha, contact SoCal departure. Contact departure, 03 Alpha. Number 03 Alpha, departure frequency will be 135 points. 1, 3, 5, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, Number 290 
Zero Three Alpha, Riverside Tower, Runway Two Seven, Clear to Land. Clear to Land, Runway Two Seven, Zero Three Alpha. Riverside Tower, November Two Nine, Zero Three Alpha. In Alpha, request taxi to return the departure. Number Two Nine Zero Three Alpha, Riverside Ground. In the future, don't switch to the ground uh, frequency unless you're told to do so. You should stay with Tower, exiting the runway all the way to the whole short point. Stay on this frequency for now. Taxi to the ramp via Alpha. Taxi to the ramp uh, via Alpha. Okay. Clarence. Jolly Clarence. November 6th. Charlie Mike. Mike Cherokee. Uh, I would like to attempt the I-4 rating today. Cherokee 76. Charlie Mike. Jolly Clarence. Good evening. Good luck on the I-4 destination. We will be also found at Kilo Oscar X-Ray Romeo. Yes. I'm going to sign off uh, and uh, collect some information for this destination. I'll sign back in. Is that okay? Absolutely. Just re, uh, report when you're back with the I-4. And uh, how long do you think it'll be? It's not going to be more than an hour, is it? No, no. I'll have to, I have to file and uh, get some uh, charts and plates. Wonderful. Yeah, I'll still be here, so it shouldn't be a problem. And uh, we'll look for your uh, flight plan to come through. Las Vegas Star Class 4658 to Las Vegas Tower, runway 19 right, clear to land, wind 1807. Clear to land, 19 right, 4658. Las exit right, taxi into the ramp via hotel, remain on this frequency today. Exit right, right via hotel, ramp frequency. Like uh, taxi the active uh, VFR east departure with the weather. Calling Long Beach Ground, need you just verify your uh, call sign, please. Uh, sorry about that. 916 Whiskey Alpha, November 916 Whiskey Alpha. Comanche 9016 Whiskey Alpha, Long Beach, uh, Long Beach Ground, Roger. And just confirm VFR eastbound. Eastbound and for the east ramp just south of uh, runway 25. Comanche 9016 Whiskey Alpha, Roger, runway 26 right, taxi the kilo. Okay, 25 right, the uh, kilo. Long Beach Tower, November 916, Whiskey Alpha, holding short of 255 Kilo, ready for departure via parking east. November 916, Whiskey Alpha, Long Beach Tower, runway 25 right, clear for takeoff, right down with departure, move. Clear for takeoff, 25 right, right down with departure, uh, 6 Whiskey Alpha. Good day, Palm Springs, Grounds County, Public Hotel, Tango, East Red, India, close traffic, runway 31 right. Public Hotel, Tango, do you mind? Uh, ground to say again, air traffic. Bray says no, sky. Skyline Tango, any mic? Thank you. Runway 31 right, taxi via Echo and Bravo. Echo and Bravo, 31 right. Public Hotel Tango. Okay, Juliet, We're center 791 Juliet, Torrance Ground Left. Okay, Sky 791 Juliet, I received there's no like, clearance delivery with this field, so would we get our uh, departure instructions with tower or with ground? Always go with the lowest, so we'll start with ground. Just uh, say your intentions. Okay, Sky, so I want you to uh, type Cessna 172 on the uh, uh, south, uh, south Angus uh, with the numbers requesting uh, VFR advisories to uh, the Number 791 Juliet, Roger, departure frequency 134.9, squawk 2061. 1349, that's 2061, squawk 791 Juliet, read back, is correct, are you ready to taxi now? Uh, in a couple of minutes, just got to get our engine started. Roger. Sky 7 Juliet, South Mountain is now in our way to Sky 7 Juliet, Roger. Runway 2 Manor Right. Text via Hotel. Correction, text via Alpha in Juliet. Text via Hotel. Correction, text via Alpha in Juliet. 2 Manor Right, taxi via Alpha in Juliet, Sky 7 Juliet. Palm Springs Tower is calling Public Dot Dingo. The mic is going to be short on the 3 1 Right. Bravo. Hey guys, welcome. Oh man, it's been a long time. I've been spending all of my free time um, for um, to build uh, slides for the upcoming Flight Simulator Weekend. It's a, kind of a convention here in, in the Netherlands about uh, everything flight sim 
uh, and I will be do I'll be doing a presentation together with Evanek um, at the beginning of November. So I need to make some slides and get my presentation in order um, so I can uh, prepare and rehearse. So that's why I haven't been flying for a, a week or so, uh, but it's been itching to get flying right away. So uh, here we are finished. Good to see you here. Uh, hoping that you will stick around um, to ask you some questions about uh, DME arcs and uh, VOR localizer back courses. Um, uh, as you all know, I guess uh, Finnish is a trusty follower here of the channel and also is willing to share his aviation knowledge with me um, to get me on track. Share Echo, good to see you as well here on the stream. Hoping you have a great Wednesday. All right, so where are we also? A nice treat, I think. Uh, we are currently at the renewed Bakersfield Untowered Airport. Greg, GPB500 has been listening to my stream um, one particular stream a while ago, I was saying, oh, Greg, please revamp, apply your magic uh, on the uh, untowered Bakersfield airport because I really love this area to fly, uh, as you know. Um, but um, the untowered airport was not been, uh, has not been polished yet uh, here at, at Bakersfield Lima 45. And Greg has spent some time and surprised me and saying, Tim, have a look. And here it is. Very very pretty don't you think wonderful so um that's why i decided to uh, stick to lima 45 here today and uh, do some um, uh, flying here do those uh, dme arcs um which uh, i haven't found any time i've i've reviewed a video on dme uh, dme arcs a while ago um but perhaps my knowledge is already lacking um so i'll just uh, depart here uh, from lima 45 as you can see here at the bottom uh i'm gonna use shafter as my vor and uh, we're just gonna pick a 15 nautical mile whatever distance from that vor and try to fly that arc all around well i'm really necessarily need to fly all around, but just to stick at a 15 nautical mile distance from that VOR um, uh, using my, my NAV1. Uh, and I think I got a, I think I got a clue of how I can handle that, but uh, we're gonna, well, gonna mess around with that. So that's fun. Also, what I'd like to do, at least in this stream, was to fly a back course, VOR back course. And uh, again, knowledge gap here. I was, um, as I already tweeted out, I thought that a back course was just flying an inverse radial. So uh, you set your uh, radial on your OBS to uh, the front position while you're actually flying toward the VOR. And then so you got the reverse needling going on and you can practice doing that. I thought that was the, the whole exercise, but Finnish uh, said, well, that's not entirely true because uh, that reverse sensing is only applicable, only is true for uh, VOR localizers. So that's also why I picked a Lima 45 here because Bakersfield or Meadows Field, so the towered airport, which is very well, just a few miles nearby here, um, uh, Lima 45 it does have a localizer. So I thought, well, perhaps I can just fly above the delta here of, um, of Bakersfield and practice um, doing that back course localizer sensing tracking uh, while flying at, uh, well, whatever, 4,000 feet or so. But I don't know if, uh, if, that's something that we can do. So Finnish, let me know if that's uh, if that's possible. So in that case, as you can see here, Schefter 115.4 that I'm going to use for the DME arc, um, and then I'm gonna I could I think I could switch frequencies to the localizer 11 um, 1.9er, and um, which only sends out one particular well radial to fly, uh, which is uh, the one what we need for uh, for this uh, uh, for this landing. Um, and I can come from the other way around, but I don't know if that works. So please let me know. That's going to be the general plan. Also, I have to see time-wise if it's going to fit at least the DME arcs. That's uh, the topic of today. Let me see. Okay. Um, so, yeah, wonderful uh, Bakersfield. Love it. So uh, perhaps we're going to do a, a traffic pattern here as well, uh, but... Uh, for starters, um, I'm just going to uh, depart here. Uh, do we see a windsock here? I think the winds are calm. We are flying with real weather today. Where is that windsock? Windsock. Otherwise, otherwise we'll just uh, look at the meters. I, I don't know if the, the flag here, the American flag, also dynamically change. Ah, there's the windsock. Both, actually. Okay, so winds calm, as you can see. Um, I think just a just a few knots, uh, so that's fine. It's coming from that direction, so I guess one ray 
one six here would favor our departure even though it's winds calm so that means we're flying to the south and uh, we need to fly to the right there uh, Bakersfield Meadows Airfield is over there somewhere and there's also where Schefter is so there that's um, um, the viewer that we're going to use for the DME arc very very basic okay so there we are in the cockpit um, I'm not going to do the walk around because why should we I'm already uh, a bit familiar quite familiar actually with um, with doing those so just going to go uh, go with the uh, just going to start with the startup um, engine start and uh, get right at it that's the idea, at least. Um, okay. Uh, do I need some frequencies? I think I do need one. Um, let's see. Let me first grab that chart again, because I think I do need it. No, that's not the one I need. How did I get there? Oh yeah, I know. Airports. Yeah, there it is. ILS localizer, but yes. Um, and then I just like to see Lima. I hear CTF, and I think, yeah, one two two point eight. Not a surprise at all. Julie Finishy, just tell ADC you want to practice tracking the back course while maintaining VOR. Yeah, but Finish, I'm not, I'm not planning really to to bust the airspace. Actually, uh, the controlled airspace. So I'm just going to fly an echo and just practice with that uh, tracking because uh, I don't think that I'm capable yet of doing so, uh, being really on track on that back course. So um, I think I'm just going to fly at 4,000 feet or so outside of the delta and uh, do that backtracking to see what uh, see what happens. Okay, um, first off, cold and dark check. Um, let's first, well, we've already fasten our seatbelts. We're not going to do that walk around. Here we are. Uh, door is closed. Parking brakes are set. Uh, life fast fire extinguisher. Door is closed. ELT set to auto. Flap lever is up and our flaps are up. My mixture is out. Throttle is out. Trim is working. Fuel tank set to both. Fuel cutoff is in. Alternate is in. Um, and all the circuit breakers are nicely in. My switch panel is working too. Uh, beacon switch and, and the avionic switch is off. Alrighty, uh, good. Let's do the control surfaces to the right. That one goes down. That one goes up. That one goes down. That one goes up. Up. Trim tab. Yep, see my trim. It's working and my rudders work as well. Wonderful. Batteries on. Got enough fuel here. That's good. Um, avionics. Metal field information, Oscar. 1900 Zulu weather. That's interesting. Wind light and variable. Vis well, all right. Um, let me see. Flaps down to see if they go down and they go down in sync. Well, they do. Nice. Good for me. Good to me. Uh, let me see. Transponder off. 1200 is good. Uh, we'll set that soon. Uh, Unshared messages are correct and the panel is working too. Set, set. And we are ready to go. Okay. Uh, throttle a bit in. Uh, fuel pump on. In two, three. Cut off again. Fuel pumps both. Parking brakes are set. No one is walking around. Nope. So clear prop. Back to both. Twelve hundred. Oil pressure is already in the green. Lean for ground. Big RPM. It's too much. There it was. Okay. We set to a thousand. Alternator on. We see a rise in the M meter. Avionics on. Nice. Responder to mode C. 1200. Wait until he, until he boots up again. Oh man. Can't wait to fly. It's been a long time, guys. Busy, busy times. Too much on the um, on the GPS today. Uh, frequencies one to two point eight. That's the CTF of Bakersfield here. Switch and in case we're going to go to Meadows, yeah, we are going to Meadows for a destination airport today. Um, 
we need that frequency as well. Sectional meadows is 118.1. Okay, do we have AWAS here? No, so we could, well, it's just nearby. Uh, 8 is 118.6. On the COM2. 118.6. Let's have a listen. Meadows Field Information Oscar. Oscar. 100 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility 8. Sky clear. Temperature 1.5. 2.7 Altimeter 3001 Arriving runways 12 left 12 right Departing runways 12 left 12 right Advise on initial contact you, you have, have Oscar, Oscar. Alright COM1 is on on the CTF and on the standby is Meadows Tower Wonderful Okay um, Meanwhile the engine is warming up slowly um, but we can already taxi. Uh, we're going to go to 1.6. Let's set the heading bug as well. Okay, and we can also set our nav 1 to Shafter, right? That's the idea at least for today. And Shafter is 115.4. 115. 115.4. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know quite how we're going to catch that DME arc, actually. I mean, we're going to we're gonna pick a, a particular distance, so let's say 15 nautical miles away from Shafter, and I'd like to fly a circle around that VOR, keeping that 15 nautical mile um, um, in, intact, so to speak. Um, and so I need to constantly make that a very shallow turn to go all the way around Shafter. Um, and I think you need to fiddle around with the OBS here um, to constantly check whether you are perpendicular to 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 the shafter of VOR in this case. But I'm not quite sure practically how to do that. So we're just gonna just gonna experiment uh, while we are uh, up there. Um, what's the altitude that we're gonna fly? Well, let's see. Shafter Delta is gonna go up to 3,000, so above 3,000. Is there anything else? Nose and Victor Airways restricted. That restricted Limor from 5,000 up and Monday to, to Thursday 08. Yes, so that's active. Strike fighter wing Pacific fleet, blah 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 blah. Um, so if we're gonna fly a particular arc. Yeah, so 15 nautical miles would be just fine if I look at this. 15 nautical miles is about uh, this range, so that's good. And on the other side, well, we've got terrain, obviously. Can we make that 15? Yes. And Bakersfield Moa, I think that's gonna be quite low. It's emitted by Notum, okay. From 2000 up, so only when the Notum says. So I'm gonna ignore that. And also, it's a Moa, so we are allowed legally allowed to fly in a Moa, but it's not really safe to do so. Uh, at least um, if you're on flight following it might be a little bit more safe, but anyways, we are uh, clear for the 15 nautical mile arc. Okay. Um, that's it. So just a right turn from departure. Gonna go up to well, VFR altitudes, well we're gonna go all the way around, so uh, let's just pretend we're flying westbound. Um, West northbound, so that means 4,500 will be fine. Also, being clear um, underneath that um, Lemoore Moa uh, to the northwest, so that's fine. 4,500, and we're going <coughs> to fly those DME arcs. Okay, cool. Um, anything else? No, no crosswinds. Um, no. Okay, working brakes released. Brake test. It's working. To the left, turn indicator, slip indicator, heading indicator, everything is stable. Good. Now we need to go to the right here. Look at these textures. I'm so pleased with Greg that he uh, made this field. It's a really lovely area to fly here. Alpha. 
one six. Uh, there we go. Okay, good on the RPM. It's a bit more. All right. We're going to use the clock today. Really cross uh, country flights. Just some uh, practicing some uh, me arcs, so that's fine. Parts is right, four thousand five hundred. Okay. See if I can set uh, some music on. All right, here we are. What's it? What's it say? For advisory service, contact Bakersfield approach. Departure procedures runway 16. Turn degree left turn. Resume a heading after two miles. Avoid residential area. Field elevation. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. So even while we're planned to go to the right, um, after two, we just our first initial two miles should be a 20 degree left turn. Wonderful. Okay. Um, let me see. That's the run up area over there. In front of us. That's cool. particular direction to point our nose at because we've got no ground winds um, okay uh, engine is warm enough or the oil is warm enough yes it is thanks for the cheers B2 thank you really encouraging welcome on board hope you're having a great Wednesday by the way um, okay so mixture full in um, let's go 1800s let's share a message None, that's good. Oil pressure is still there. Everything is stable. Nice. Left mag. Oh, yeah, it's uh, filed. And the right one as well. So, to 2000. And let's see. Until it gets rough, like this, and keep it there for 20 seconds. Also, my hangbook was not really nicely set to 1.6, by the way. Get you full in. Back to 1800. FMAC. Sounds good. And the right one as well. Nice. Okay. Um, anything else? Mm, no. Well, vacuum was in the green as well. Back to idle, engine doesn't quit on us, and the oil pressure is still there. Okay, we got a good engine. Nice. Okay, uh, trim is set. Although I noticed that I actually should put in a little bit more of a nose down trim, actually, for this Skyhawk. Uh, especially with the 10 degrees of flaps. Um, so that's what I just did. That transponder is on. Uh, we are ready to go. And COM1 is on. Yes. I think no one is on final, but let's check. Before we do our announcement for our departure. No, didn't see anyone. Okay. Bakersfield traffic, yellow sky goes to Pony Runway 16 for a departure to the west, 4500 Bakersfield. Alright, there we go, guys. One six confirms, confirms with the heading indicator. Again, make sure full in, landing lights on, strobe lights on. There we go. Full power. A little bit of right rudder. Track that center line. 40. Engine is still in the green. 50. And 60 rotates. Nice. The nose a bit down. Get to VY. Good. up that 20 degree to the left so 140 there we go for two miles so that's about a uh, about a crosswind lag I guess a little bit more easy today Go. 
go. Well, two miles. Are we two miles away? I guess so. Did I say Schefter? I, th I, th I thought I mentioned it, but I didn't do so. Uh, Schefter is... Well, I think I did. 115.4? Uh, is it set? Oh, it is set. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, 12 nautical miles it's reading. Okay, so what we could do is fly a little bit to the southwest to get to that 15 nautical mile... distance. And we're getting closer. That's weird. That's weird. Where are we getting closer? Southwest. We're in Bakersfield. Schefter is to the north, as you can see here. 115.4 is set. It should be Echo Hotel Foxtrot. That's identified. I guess west is already a little bit inbound. Okay. Let's go south then and see what's going to happen. Yeah, there it goes. Now it's running up. Good. It's still okay. Around 3000 AGL, or feet here, MSL, I mean. Uh, we can start to lean. The air, air is then thin enough to do that with a, a full power setting. Let's go a little bit more to the south here to. Uh, make that DME to run up a little bit faster. It's lean. Look at the EGT there. Something like this. So guys, for those of you who are Dutch, the beginning of November, the 4th and 5th of November, is Flight Simulator Weekend in Lelystad Airport. A uh, really nice flight sim get-together of a lot of flight clubs, flight sim clubs, uh, but also um, there, there's going to be F-16 simulators and all kinds of x is going to present there, Aerosoft is going to present there, I believe they're even going to present a new flight sim I read um, so that's going to be interesting um, and also I'm going to present there uh, together with Evanek we'll talk about the thrill and educational value of flight simming uh, we would love to meet you. So if you are living in the Netherlands or in Germany or in Belgium and like to get over, let's see doing so. We would love to have you. All right. 14 nautical miles. EGT is not that high. Everything is looking good still. Five hundred feet to go for a cruising. Yeah, so if I now zoom in on my GPS, this will make sense that we're now fl flying a little bit more aggressively away from Shafter. Um, no, the other way around. It's in, in, in. Schefter is just at the bottom here. You guys can see here. There it is. So what I'd like to do is that once we hit 15, like about now, make the turn to the right here. I'd like to keep at 15. And fly a circle around Schefter. That's the DMR kind of philosophy. But how much? 
So in this case, I should actually use my OBS, and I haven't really thought this through that much. So let's just first get to a cruising uh, configuration here. 4,500, a little bit of a nose down trim. Engine is looking good. Lights are, then lights are off. They're leaned. Perfect. So let me see. How can we can how can we reason about this? Um, I could set a particular radial to flight towards Schefter, which is now north, which is not really, or a, a bit north. So that means that Schefter is a little bit to the right of me, so I'm shortcutting, I think. So this DME distance, oh, it's still increasing. Let me see how I can get about this. So if I fly this heading, I will go straight towards... So I need to fly this heading. That's 260-ish, at least, when I'm centered. So now I should fly 265, I guess. Does that make sense? 265. I'm now resetting. running away. I could just wait a bit, obviously. I could just... I don't... well... It's even better just to keep a really gentle kind of turn to the right here, because I know that I will be... I will need to keep turning. This is a little bit too fast. I, I guess also from 16 nautical miles um, it's gonna be... A, it's gonna need a very gentle turn to the right to get all the way around Shafter. So I'm really climbing here, Tim. Come on. But I think this is kind of like it. Hi, the GPS man. No cheating, finish says. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Ryan. Good to see you, Tim. You need to determine the radial you're on and fly perpendicular to it. Then reset every 10 there. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks for the share. First. So perpendicular is... I think this, this works, right? So north, I should now fly west. So I'm now actually shortcutting it a bit. You can see I'm gaining on that 15 nautical miles. So I can also do that actually because the exercise was to fly 15 nautical miles, not 16. So let's do just this. This should decrease my DME there. Yeah, there it goes. Wonderful. So we should now fly perpendicular, so 272, kind of like, to get, to stay exactly from the same dis distance from, from Shafter of the VOR in this case. Going down, 4,500, there we are, we're obviously at a high speed, so I'm not going to trim just yet, because our airspeed is going to decrease, and I will be trimming all over the place. Still shortcutting it. 15 nautical miles is coming up. Let's keep track of the OBS here. So now it's going to be 277-ish. This is better stable airspeed. So now we can trim a bit. A little bit nose down trim. Engine is still looking good. And fly the hang on the left side of the OBS in the case plus wind correction. Oh yeah, yeah. Ryan, that's what I'm gonna do in my next flight with wind correction because then obviously I need to take into account that as well. But thanks for, for mentioning uh, that. Oh, all the way around. Two eight zero coming up. Hi James, good to see ya. Okay, that's one five zero. So now I'm gonna fly exactly. Two, eight, and a bit. And that is in sync. Well, it is, I think. So now it should kind of stick to 15. Very gentle bank to the right. Oh, a little bit more. It's already 285. Yep, and we're back. 15. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so you're constantly changing this one. Applying the heading that's indicated over here. 2, 
288-ish. Yeah, so what you can do is just wait. I mean, it's, it's not really a big deal that you're 0.1 nautical miles farther away when you're flying a DME arc. I don't know what the range is, actually. But we could just fly this heading, wait a bit, I guess when we've got one deflection or two deflections, then reset it and say, okay, now it should be 290. So 290. There we are. And do the same drill. Wait until it wait. Uh, wait until the deflection is two points or something like that. Yeah, exactly, Ryan. Exactly. And I, I, what's the 10 degree? What is 10 degrees? Does that mean 10 degrees on this rose, do you mean? Or 10 degrees in terms of these dots? So now we're at 295. So I guess this was a 5 degree. I can just wait a bit longer, I guess. It depends on how far away we're flying the DME arc, how quick this thing is going to swap over. But I think I can just wait a little bit more. As you can see, my, my distance from Shafter is quite okay. 15.1, quite steady. So this is flying a DME arc. Not that difficult. Not that difficult at all. Right on the on the instrument check right you get plus one a whole mile so okay and but how does that translate to the instrument is that one is that one deflection one dot deflection or is that two i don't actually know how to read the what i do is wait for a half a scale and then twist the obs by 10 to put the needle half scale to the other way ah so i'm turning to the wrong way here so now we should fly 3-0-ish. Okay, Rana, I, I, I get what you're saying, but... Yeah, so now we're now at 15.3, so let's catch up. So I'm going to overturn a little bit. So we're shortcutting that circle now to get closer to Shafter, but shallow. Until we hit the circle at DME Arc, which should be somewhere around here. And then we're going to catch the radial again. There it is, 15.2. Ah, that's true finish. Depends on distance, yeah. So the sensitivity of this needle depends on how far away you are from the particular VR that you're flying. This is actually not that difficult. No one said it was difficult. Well, well, that's not entirely true. Uh, the I-11 rating, I believe, on Pilot Edge something like the i10 the dreadful dme arc or something monsterish was said about the dme arc and that to me gave the impression that flying a dme arc is really really difficult all right 310 already flying a little bit inbounds or inbound a little bit closer to yeah but i i get the idea so let's just do one more exercise. Let's go to 10 nautical mile distance and catch the radial. So we're gonna go inbound just a bit more. We can decide how aggressively we're gonna catch that radial, but or that the DME arc, I mean. So let's do this. Again, engine is looking good. Everything is set. Frequencies good. Pilotage is already live. It's nice. Yes, yeah, so you can see we're now shortcutting that circle, so the DME is decreasing. So once we hit 10 nautical miles, well, I guess I need to keep, keep my turn in actually. Let's do it a little bit more aggressively. Captain Boeing, good to see you. Haven't you in a while? Have you started your I ratings opinion? No, not yet. I'm just doing my preparatory training first and then do the I ratings at the end. Even though that's not necessary, but that's just how I like it. So I'm doing all the required procedures and skills in isolated ways um, and then build up a skill set that, if, it's, if it all works well, works out well, um, prepares me for doing those I ratings. So that's the idea. Ah, Mage, Magecon. Yeah, I can remember you, man. 
Long time no see. Yeah, what's up? Good to see you here. Yeah, we're now in Season 2, man. Flying IFR. Well, not really flying IFR, but practicing flying IFR. I'd like to go a little bit more towards Shefter. Let's just fly direct. Just or almost direct. You can see it on the GPS here. Otherwise, it takes a bit too long. Alright, almost inbound straight to Shafter. So now it's going to go quick. And again, tune in. Yeah, we could also just exactly fly this heading, obviously. Which is 050 currently. So we're now flying the 050 radial inbound to Shafter. And as soon as we're going to hit, or almost when we're going to hit 10, I'm going to fly the perpendicular heading, which is 325. I think. Should be able to see Meadows Field somewhere. I think it's over there. Always so hard to spot. Oh, sorry, guys. Da -da 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 -da. I'm good. We're busy now. I'm back. Hope you're good. Real fun to see you keep streaming. Absolutely. Well, um, yeah. It's just part of life, Light to me. Yeah, flying is pretty simple. Getting established and staying oriented as you go around is where people mess up sometimes. Roger that, Ryan. James, can imagine during an approach it increased vertical by tenfold. I can imagine that as well. Missing step down altitudes on the arc or flying through the final approach course, for example. Could you also... Oh, that's also interesting. Never realized that that is part of... Uh, oh, we're at 10 nautical miles, guys. So, we're now a bit late with that turn. Now we need to fly to 320. So, obviously, we're now already flying a little bit more inbound-ish, as you can see. So, I should have started my turn a little bit sooner. Three-ish. A little bit more to the west here to catch up. To catch up, to catch up, to catch up. 9.7, 9.8. a little bit soon of a turn here to the right but I get the idea guys I get the idea there it is 9 9 so now we're gonna fly the perpendicular heading so that's two three three five fish there we are and then the same drill goes as well wait the deflection and then we said okay that's indeed me arc but yeah right I never realized that that's uh, also so now you can fly the the me arc while actually going for your approach down as well and yeah I can imagine then that you need to do multiple things at the same time and things can become a lot more complex interesting can I wait to do that with you guys good morning good luck I just finished my i5 now things will get something more complicated awesome captain good luck with your flights as well cannot wait to start with mine Spain bros hello greetings from Kenya good to see you welcome aboard good to see you guys it's been such a long time Okay, so I'm leaving the DME arc exercise. I get the idea. Next up for my following flight, my next stream tomorrow, perhaps, or the day after, I'm going to do that with a crosswind component. Which is still the same drill, but then you need to take into account your crap position, obviously. And while you are... That's also interesting, because you're flying in that arc, that cr required crabbing into the wind differs. because It's constantly changing because you're, you're making turns so that's interesting I guess it also applies to flying holdings which also reminds me of a remark by Finnish saying that uh, I should actually bump my holding pattern practice up front actually um, a little bit sooner I've put that on my curriculum for a few streams ahead but because approaches uh, could also incorporate holdings um, 
um, I could, I should actually practice those in an isolated manner as well with crosswinds as well. So I think I'm going to do that after the DME arcs, which again therefore postpones the actual ATC, my first ATC IFR practice approach or departure or whatever, which I'm really looking forward to. But still, I prioritize on my training because hey, that's just what we do here at the Uncertified Pilots. And again, guys, um, loving the area here. And again, loving the fact that GPB built uh, Lima 45 and surprised me there. It was really, really awesome. And it looked great. Okay, so next up. Um, there is a localizer, apparently. And I was not quite aware that a VOR localizer was different from a VOR. Um, which is a little bit silly of me, um, but hey, that's how you learn, right? So I thought you can just, the idea is I like to practice flying a back course on a VOR radial. At least that was the thing that I was on my mind. So I thought I could just pick any VOR, tune in a radial, set it to the front position while flying towards it, and then you get the reverse sensing and you can still do that backtracking kind of stuff. But finish it, nope. That's not how it goes. So I switch plans and try to figure out what's an airport with a localizer approach. Well, luckily Meadows Field has got one. Again, I need to practice reading these plates, guys. I know many of you are already quite familiar with how to read those, and there's some common sense information here, but this is... I'm on the brink of studying this and flying this with you and ATC, and I cannot wait. I mean, these, these charts are so pretty. My gosh. Um, anyways, that's for another time. I can see localizer there on the top. ILS or localizer runway 30 right. So there is a localizer, and I think that should be this light slope, 30-ish, 301. Um, and that's a localizer. So if I am I correct that I can now fly the inverse of 301 from the other side where we are now on the north side of Baker's uh, of Baker Street Meadows and try to fly just on 4,500, so we're not going to fly, do, ac do actually the, the approach just yet, fly the back cores of that localizer. I think that should work. I do not know. Let's just find out. 119.9 on the NAV1. 119.9. 111, was it? Yeah. 1, otherwise we're at a comp frequency. 119.9. I switch. Ha! Ah, ooh! Ha ah, ha ha! Why do I get a vertical indication? Because a localizer is just lateral, right? I would expect this one to be neutral? Interesting. Okay, so... Let me see. I think if you were, you would fly, actually fly this approach, I guess you would set the OBS to 301 at the top. I'd like to fly the back course. Now I think I should still set it to three. All the way around. 301. Is that correct? 301 at the top? Ah, finish. Right, right, right. Well, never mind. I'm just going to practice the localizer anyway. 301. Ah, that's lucky. We're just going to pass it. As you can see, there's Bakersfield. So there it is. Um, but now it's reverse thinking, I guess. Let's see what's going to happen. Totally, un un totally unsafe here. Not looking outside to see if we actually got some uh, traffic here on our tail. I do have got a... Huh? A vertical. Was not expecting that at all. But it's an ILS or localizer. Um, now the glide slope is inactive. Okay. We need to make that turn. Turn, turn, turn. I should have turned the other way around, I guess. I don't know. There we are. East. Okay. So the inverse of 301. This 
so we're now flying towards that. Yeah, there it goes. There's the needle already. So I'm over shooting it, obviously. All right. There it is. Okay, it seems like it's just the same way, right? So I need to fly... No. I'm flying to the left here, and the needle is walking away from me, from the center. So it's the other way around. Yeah. So it's a back course. So now I need to pretend that I'm the needle, and the circle is actually the track that I, that I like to catch. So now I'm flying... Yeah, now the needle is coming in, right? Yeah, okay, that's okay. So that's the reverse kind of and and that's why I think I should have I could have practiced this kind of backwards thinking with a plain VOR as well. Flying towards a VOR but setting the OBS to a front position. It works the same way around, I, I guess. What are you guys saying? Seminars. I know Captain Boeing. I've seen them all. I've actually also bought the uh, real-world IFR training course by Pilot Edge. Um, that's interesting as well. Oh. Oh, that's true. That's true. Obviously, because it's a localizer, only one radial is sent out, you could say. So the OBS has no function at all here. That's why it is... Yeah. Obviously. Okay. That's also right, Ray. Yeah, so the only advantage is if you set the the compass rows to that heading of your um of your of your runway, you know um you, you can more easily infer what heading you need to fly or your heading, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Interesting, interesting. And there you can see Baker's Field. On the money. That's a back course. Done. Why did I go why did I get a glide slope indication a while ago? Oh, because I'm now flying the back course. Because I did have a glide slope reading a while ago, right? And I think now because I'm flying, catching up or flying the back course, it doesn't get, it doesn't provide me with that, that reading. Yeah, I think so. So I'd keep the yeah, uh, Roger Ryan. Gotcha. Ah, nice, uh, Mage Con. Yeah, the A2A 172 is just gorgeous. I miss that airplane. I miss those guys. I mean, uh, I love sim coders. I love X Plane. I love A to A to come over to X Plane. Uh, but yeah. Also, guys, uh, for the pre 3D guys, I just saw a tweet of um, about the um, Rex Sky Force package, which I've already been looking forward to for a year or so, or even more, uh, which is the next. Well, not even evolution, but revolution of uh, Rex's texture. But it's not only texture, I think it's also a weather engine. Um, a completely reworked model of how to depict weather in the flight sim. So not the 2D textures, but actually a 3D model of a cloud. Um, and the early pictures that they shown uh, look just mind-blowingly real. Uh, but it took some time for them, a lot more time to finish on that product. And they're announcing that they are on the brink of getting things right and going to announce it. So that's going to be quite interesting. And again, I'm going to be so jealous when it comes out because it's not for X-Plane. Note the flag is not being received. No, I know, Ryan. I know. But I was wondering why it was not received. Because I did get a reading while I was flying that 301-ish kind of heading. And I think it's now... It does, I don't get a reading right now because I'm flying the other way around. Oh, it's just the service volume. I'm just flying above it. Ah, now I got you. Sorry. Okay, so if I would be flying lower than the GPU... Well, that's that's not something that I would expect to see. So I'm flying too high or I'm, or I'm too high and, and too close to the airport for the glide slope to work. 
so nice to have you guys here on stream to teach me. I mean, uh, it's, it's awesome. You know what I'm really interested in to do? To disconnect from Pilot Edge. And turn on IMC and catch, fly the ILS for the first time. Even though that's not even part of my training yet. But just to see how I do. Right on top now, you can see no readings. Past it. Shall we do that? Shall we fly the ILS offline? I mean, disconnected from Pilot Edge. Might be fun. But I don't quite get these plates. So it's it's saying ILS or localizer. Why do they say that? Because it seems to me that it's just a plain ILS, right? And obviously an ILS also provides lateral guidance. So an ILS has a localizer in it, right? So why do you specify why do the guys specify that? Why is it just ILS runway 30 right? And you know you also got a localizer. Is there also an ILS runway 30 right kind of approach played or is it always mentioned like ILS and localizer? Ozzy, good to see you. Go for it, Roger. That's one vote. Ryan, if the glide slope was out of service or your equipment couldn't receive it, you can do the approach as a localizer only. It means you can fly with an in-op GS. Ah, so those are... So... And that's always the case, guys? Or is that an advanced feature that those are two independent... systems? The, the lateral and the vertical guidance so if one fails the other will still work can it also work the other way around that the lateral that the localizer is doesn't work but the vertical does work i guess so not always okay interesting stuff and again I'm a little bit of a noob i still need to study those video courses um, of king schools they were donated to me by uh, by finish but No, okay. So only the glide slope could fail, I guess. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do is disconnect from Pilot Edge, even though I always love to fly on Pilot Edge, as you know. What we're going to do is so we set on IMC right away. Might be interesting. Let's just do it. Let's just have some fun, guys. Um, no, no real world weather. Just manually configured. I want to be in the soup. IFR, cat, what does that mean? Cat 1, cat 2, cat 3. I thought it was associated with airplanes. But I guess those are categories of how worse, oh, how worse the, you can see the, the, the visibility there. So at a thousand feet we break yeah, so runway visual range. So at a at a thousand feet we're gonna see the that's interesting. Shall we do that? Again, not trained for this, just this, let's just see what happens. Apply. Uh fine by me. As soon as we're on the approach we don't see anything. Okay. Two hundred. Okay, Ryan, thanks. If the local liner feels you can fly it. No, obviously, finish. Obviously, yeah. So you obviously need, yeah, you obviously need to localize because otherwise you, yeah, with the glide slope indicator only, it's going to be quite a challenge to get to the runway. Yeah. So the localizer is is very important. All right. All right. All right. So ILS localizer is kind of like saying, if things fail, if the glide slope 
system fails of that transmitting thingy, you can still fly the localizer. Yeah, okay. All right, um, so we're still flying, well, we're flying off of the um, ILS. It doesn't really matter to change this one. We're gonna fly three zero. Let's set the heading block for my memory. Uh, eight, so that I know that what I'm doing. And let's go down a bit. And I guess then if I fly far away from Bakersfield and I'm low enough, then I do get a G a glide slope reading, right? Gonna move that away. And that one as well. Why aren't we going down? So three zero is the runway. Yeah, I can just set it. Well, I'm just gonna follow uh, Ryan's advice. Why not? Just set it to three zero because I need to drill and practice that stuff, anyways. Three, zero, one. Okay, so now we're going down. We're flying away, south, southwestish, south from the runway. So I'm gonna make a left turn and try to catch it. One and an eighty degree left turn. Uh, just good. Uh, we could run into icing because we're at six degrees. So why not already turn on the pedo heats? And we're still fine. We are disconnected, right? Just to make sure. Yes. Okay. Those categories refer cut one is typically 200 feet. I mean, 200 feet and a half a nautical, a half a statute mile visibility. ILS approach categories. Higher categories go to lower minimums and require special aircraft and crew. Okay. But I now set the weather to cat. I don't know. I need to study that stuff. Ah, we're past the radio? Yeah, we were drifting off, I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Going need to descend anyway. I guess at any time now the glide slope reading comes in, right? Or it is independent of what my nose is pointed towards. Or does it only work when my when my, when my heading is kind of like in the range towards the the ILS transmitter? Break out at 200. I thought it was at 1,000. Let's just check. Um, whoop. Weather. Presets. Cat 1 is at 2,700. But this is perhaps MSL. Uh, airport elevation, 500 feet. Yeah. So if I set it to Cat... Three. This is 500, so that makes sense. It's 200. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I set it to this. Okay. Okay. Feet of visibility. Roger that. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Buying is so much fun, guys. Especially with you on board. Ah, happy Wednesday. I mean, again, I've spent most of my free time previous week on... Um, Designing slides for a presentation on the Flight Simulator Weekend at Daily Start, beginning of November. Making videos and stuff. Gonna hopefully, hopefully gonna inspire people to uh, pursue flight simming, but also to receive the educational value of flight simming, also for children. Even aside from any 
interest in becoming a pilot or not, I think flight simming on its own should be a, could be a, a great vehicle in schools, also in primary schools, to inspire children about all kinds of technological advancements and, 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 and math and science and so that's going to be the topic of my uh, presentation. I'm going to do that uh, together with Evanek. I think I'm low enough. Let's gonna see what's going to happen here. Well, I only see clouds, but I can already see the ground. So I'm hoping that we're going to going to be in full IMC here, because that's what I like to see happening. Don't have a reading of the G uh, of the of the glide slope yet. No need to turn around, turn around, turn around. So 40 degree angle, kind of like ah, there it is. Yeah. So it, it apparently has to do with my not only the altitude but also where my noise, where my nose is pointed at. So the glide slope is above me. So yeah, I'm already quite low. Just keep it at this, a little bit more power. And I don't trust the weather actually. Um, it should be worse. Uh, foggy, well, I don't think it's foggy enough. Um, how do I change it? Overcast cumulus. Well, that sounds IMC. Uh, tops. Yeah, should break. All right, back to instrument flying again, guys. Okay, so let me see if I get this right. So the glide slope is above me. I'm the circle right now. And the glide slope is literally right of me. Well, I'm actually, it's in front of me, but I'm... I'm left of the glide slope. Uh, the left, left of, the, of the, the ground track that I need to catch. Center here. Uh, we'll go a little bit more aggressively here, otherwise, I will already fly into Bakersfield. Ryan, no, GS glide slope reception doesn't depend on heading, it's just only projected in a narrow range, so you didn't receive it until you get, got close. Roger. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's just a band. Yeah. Again, we're not flying in overcast. I don't know what X plane is doing, but I mean it it tops to the right here. It does look pretty though. Let's go a little bit more is that I need to be careful though because that means that my needle there will go very rapidly towards the center soon. Flying an ILS approach. ILS or localizer, yeah, okay. Engine is still looking good. 10 degrees outside Celsius, so video heat can still remain on. To turn on our landing lights, why not? Ah, there's the. Okay, so let's stick. Oh my gosh, two things at the same time. Uh, well, let's just keep on altitude here. We will gradually catch. Yeah, that means that we're gonna now need to descend with 500 feet per minute, right, guys? Still need to catch that. Still need to catch it. One thing at the time. <laughs> this is challenging, my gosh. Okay, guys, pray for me. Catching on that. Oh, not too much. Watch that attitude indicator, Tim. That's your best friend. Good. All right. This is interesting. Go down more rapidly. I guess the trick here also is to get a steady RPM going. Bad. One notch of flaps. One notch of 
maps. 500 feet. Bit more power. More power. 500 feet is good. We're on the needle. Not bad at all, Tim. Okay. Send a bit more. And again, this is not trimming. This is just using the yoke. Not bad at all. Speed is good. I think we've got a stabilized approach here. Don't say that too quickly. Oh, sending a bit too quick. There goes the speed. 2000. Not time to get my 20 degrees going. I'm also noticing that I'm making these changes with my yoke, but perhaps I should do that with... Ah, that's IMC. Okay, good. Good. Come on, go down. Go down. Man, this requires some focus. But for a first time, it's not too bad. Too much to the right, Tim. Come on, it's not steady. I'm not I'm not I'm using my yoke too much too rapidly. Relax. All those subtle, tiny movements. Move it to the left here. 1500 feet. Right. A bit more power then. Not trimming because we're low. Glide slope is above us. A bit more power. You can see there goes the climb a bit. It just fixes itself. I think. I hope. What was the airport elevation? 500 feet. So now at a thousand. So it's already time to too high. Come on, Tim. Put to the right here. Let's get into the wide bend. Damn it! Come on. It's the wide bend. It's not your flaps. Just use that to gain some speed, more power. To the left, guys. Come on, 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 down, to down, 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 down. Man, what a scan is going on. My, I'm getting nuts here. 500. 500, yeah. Do we break free? From clouds or what? Come on, Tim. Come on. Guys, pray for me. Pray for me. Um, I'd like to be clear of clouds. This is, this is insane. Don't read the chat right now. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, the airport elevation is at 500 feet. So we're already 400 feet. I should be able to, or should I just, should I just continue? Let's just continue. Why not? It's just a sim. Up, up. Slide slope, lift it down. Too much. Too much. My airspeed. I'm looking at my vertical speed indicator, and I know that's not the instrument to look at. That's not the instrument to look at. Here comes the runway. Oh, my gosh. That's quite close. Wow. Okay, can we do this? This is nuts. This is not a safe. I think we were not able, not allowed to make this landing. That was interesting. Okay, not trimmed. Where's the power? What's up? Not bad. Lips up. And let's get off the runway. Well, 
I don't know what X-Plane is doing with the visibility, but this is not breaking free from a thousand feet. Either way though, for a first try, that was not bad. And I notice how I have been practicing with instrument flying and with doing my VFR flights properly, really taking the time to nail skills, pays off. Ryan, keep going. So that's way lower than exactly. Pretty awesome job for the first one. Thanks, Ryan. Way to go. Thanks, Ozzy. Okay. 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 So. Um, let's just set the weather. I, I don't have time, guys. I would love to keep flying, but to make dinner. So only 6 o'clock here in the afternoon in the Netherlands. Um, weather. Clouds and visibility. Okay. Boom. Landing lights off. Strobe lights off. Already leaned. Okie doke. Let's get to the flight school and park. Alright, so DME arc flying. Easy. And I get the idea that when you're going to combine that stuff with um, stepwise um, descents and ATC and the other thing well ATC is not really it's not really a big thing there because you're just flying the approach you know already what you need to fly um, but anyways doing multiple you're also going to check the engine and other stuff um, that it becomes a little bit more complicated but still flying a DME arc is not that difficult at least in winds calm the back course was also basic it just means that you need to think the other way around um, you are the needle instead of the circle in the center. So, um, that's also not that difficult. And ILS, ILS flying was also, well, fun. I was scanning all over the place, and again, the same kind of stuff emerges, uh, emerged um, that I also noticed when flying an IMC on instruments and doing the unusual attitudes and stuff, is don't focus don't make your vertical speed indicator your primary instrument don't lock on on a particular instrument it's too sensitive and indeed what Ryan is saying as well use the speed use the uh, power for altitude and pitch for speed and well especially I mean it was insane how close up I needed to fly it until I saw the the runway so, uh, and then the needle becomes much more sensitive and it becomes very, very difficult to catch the needle, as, as you noticed. Um, but still, those same rules apply. Uh, should I go here? No. I'm not a big airplane. Pitch for descent? No. Power for speed? On an ILS. Oh, it's the other way around? I think I read about that as well. So usually with VFR flying, it's... Thank you, De Texaco. It's exactly not what I wanted. Yeah. So usually with VFR flying, when you're on an approach, you, you use pitch for speed and power for altitude, right? But with an ILS, it's the other way around. I think I've read about s something about that. Then it's pitch for the send and power for speed. Okay. Thanks, Sierra Echo. Region of reverse command. Slow flights. Well, the flight school is over there. Because of flight school. I remember it from the airport diagram. Well, no ATC today, guys. Other than just an announcement of a departure. Uh, but it was fun, I think. Technical practice is so cool on Flight Sim. Again, it ignites my spirit as an uncertified pilot to keep training. It's so much fun. Okay, but having said that, perhaps I was just lucky today. And 
I was flying with winds calm conditions. Real world conditions though, but it was winds calm. And the next trick is going to be flying with a significant crosswind component and then do a DME arc and then do an ILS or back course. I mean, ILS is... Are, I, I'm, I was even ahead of myself here with those ILSs. Those are coming up, but flying with a crosswind component makes stuff a little bit more complicated so that's next i think perhaps tomorrow or the day after tomorrow i hope you guys will jump aboard ryan as well hope you will be there to guide me i really appreciate your feedback here it's uh it's really wonderful pitot heat i didn't turn off and that's not a good thing because the pitot heat actually relies on airflow and if you turn on your pitot heat on the ground when there's not really significant airflow the thing gets really 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 hot and it can actually damage damage itself so uh, that's why you only you turn on your pitot heat uh, when you are airborne or flying. Um, transponder off. Avionics off. No, not the prop. The, the mixture. Very good. Then the magnetos. Batteries. Parker brakes. Cross feet. Looks good. There we go. Now, before I sign off. I have to see my approach with the flight recorder. Don't know if the flight recorder also uh, then regenerates the weather because I just like to see how I'm flying with the visual. Um. Okay. So let's have a look. Um, release my seat belts here. Um. Yeah. I think I'm already trying to... Ca no, I'm not. Okay, uh, let's also close the door for aesthetics here. Uh, shift 4. And control P. Let's just, just go outside here. Yeah, so here I'm flying and here I'm going to catch... Well, that's a steady, uh, steady descent. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, let's go a little bit closer. Yeah, here you can see me wiggle. <laughs> Small corrections, though. That was good. Here you can see the reverse back course stuff that we did. And there's the runway. Wow, this is pretty good for a first try. Come on, guys. I'm a bit proud, actually. But there were a few phases during the approach. You can see nice peppy lights, by the way. Two reds, two whites. Incomplete IMC. Um, there were a few instance, instances when I was flying that I was noticing or over-relying on a particular dimension of my flight. So I was focusing on the lateral stuff and forgot about my glide slope. And then, and then you can... It's almost like... A yo-yo effect where everything gets gets every error gets exaggerated, uh, and eventually you just lose track. So that's is very important at that moment, just to focus on one thing, fix it, and then re-establish. And I, I again, I think a stabilized approach. Set yourself up for a stabilized approach. Good flaps, good RPM, subtle changes. That's the way to go about it, I guess. Um, yeah, here, here, there was a... Here, I'm pretty good, pretty good. Here I'm drifting off, the needle gets really, really sensitive. There we're coming in, and here I noticed the runway markings here, and then I said, oh, there I am. And then I tried to correct for it. So let's see how I did. Power off, bleed all of that, bleed away of all of that airspeed energy. Nice, nice. And there it goes, just naturally. Nose up. And on the center line. Not really 
too stable here, as you can see. Let's look at it from the other way around. Yeah, we're not crabbed, no winds. Yeah, so I'm aiming for that center line, so here I notice that I'm overshooting it. Yeah, see a lot of rudder here, so that's not really good for the wheels, but it was good overall. Thanks for the follow, Al. Oh, thank you. Much appreciated. And there we are. Very, very fun educational flight. Really cool. We're. Let's get a nice ending shot here. Um, tower behind. That's a nice shot, perhaps. Yeah, that's pretty. Bakersfield Meadows. Nice. Um, guys, thank you for joining in, especially the Ryan. Thank you for joining here aboard and guiding me uh, through all of the exercises that I was uh, working on. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you will join in again. Uh, perhaps this week. Don't know when I want to fly tomorrow or the, well, the day after. Have to see. Uh, but anyways, I uh, appreciate your presence here on the stream. And also, Finnish, thank you uh, also for sharing your knowledge here. Um, really appreciate you being here uh, aboard and all uh, of our other passengers. Um, thank you so much, guys. It's really encouraging to see you jump aboard here uh, each and every time. Also, after just a few weeks of silence when I'm busy with work, uh, I can still rely on some uh, happy passengers here aboard. Um, that really means a lot, so thanks. Um, again, next stream, uh, I'm going to fly the same stuff. DME arcs perhaps in another area, just to um, make things new a bit. Um, at least with an airport that has a localizer. Um, and we are going... I'm going to practice flying the same stuff with a significant crosswind component. And again, it's going to be the same kind of technique, uh, but then I need to uh, calculate uh, also some um, um, crab positions to uh, take into account the winds. Uh, so that's going to be interesting as well. Um, then, at least in my current program, I think, on the uncertifiedpilot.com uh, website, I think next up is then my first obstacle departure procedure. But uh, I'm going to follow up on that advice by, um, by Finnish and uh, practice uh, holdings as well because um, those are also quite interesting and also challenging so uh, I think I'm gonna do that after the DME arcs and then I completed all the isolated kind of exercises and techniques and procedures uh, as building blocks almost to then uh, venture into the actual procedural flying in terms of uh, departures, arrivals and, and approaches which I'm really looking forward to and then also with a pilot edge uh, with ADC trying to get as close to a real-world instrument-rated pilot in flight sim as I possibly can. Thanks, Ryan, again. Thank you for your help, guys. Thank you for joining on the stream. As always, very, very much appreciated. Also, thank you for the cheer, B2. Or almost forgot. Thank you. Much, much appreciate that support as well. Uh, guys, hoping to see you on my next stream. As always, happy flights and blue skies. Bye. Falls Towers, Skyline Point. Hubble Hill, Tango, Indy Link, Palm Springs Tower, Squawk 6250. 6250. Hubble Hill, Tango, Indy Link, Palm Springs Altimeter is 2985, radar contact, about uh, 10 miles west of the Palm Springs VOR. Presently landing, uh, runway 31, so requesting straight in for 13. Uh, that's it, yes, yes. Remember, uh, correction, Hubble Hill, Tango, Indy Link, make straight in runway 13 left and clear to land. Zero nine or zero five. Clear the land runway three left. Bubble Hill Tango, any mic, thanks. Palm Springs, Clearance, plus four six five eight is type PC twelve slam call. Request clearance to Vegas S file. Call this four six five eight. Palm Springs clearance. Good afternoon. Unable to give you S file. I'll be four weeks down. Call this four six five eight is clear to the Las Vegas airport. We apply Cathedral one departure procedure to Palm Springs. Victor 370 to 29 Palms, Victor 538, Cresso to an Cresso 3 arrival. Maintain 7000, expect flight level 2, 
405 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 126.7, squawk 4658, re-back is correct. Tag ready, Mike. Taxi to the ramp via echo, remaining this frequency. Taxi to the ramp via echo, remaining on this frequency. Public does any any mic. Ontario Tower says that 237 Charlie Alpha are approximately 3, uh, 4 miles to the west inbound to that. Number 237 Charlie Alpha, roger inner left traffic. Left downwind, runway 26 left before base. Enter left downwind from 26 left and McCoy base, uh, 237 Charlie Alpha. Charlie Tower, United. United 242, John Wayne Tower, only 20 right, clear to land, wind 170, and we'll Clear to land, 20 right, clear to land. Positive Tower, Kilo, Yankee, Kilo, Palomar Tower, runway 24, Yankee, Kilo, Palomar Tower, runway 24, clear to land, wind 210, and 11. Yankee, Kilo, Palomar Tower, runway 24, clear to land, wind 210, Number 237, Charlie Alpha, runway 26 left, clear to land. 26 left, clear to land, 7 Charlie Alpha, thank you. Hot Springs Ramp Plus 4658 East Ramp with the weather coming for taxi. Hot is 4658, uh, Palm Springs Ground, runway 31 right, taxi via Echo and Bravo. Trail right via Echo Bravo 4658. Good morning, 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 Low road, runway 9, next to the road. Palm Springs Tower, plus 4658, good, right hand ground. What's the radio area check? Plus 4658, Palm Springs Tower, runway 31, right, clear for takeoff. Shift takeoff, turn right, plus 4658. 